You're listening to the seventh Bitachon podcast. We are going to continue studying together the Sefer Madrega Adam by the Altar of Novartic. The Altar was speaking about the power of Bitachon trusting in Hashem to bring about miracles. And he tells us a story. The well known story about somebody who was involved in studying and working on the idea of faith in God. And it's not in this edition, but in the original edition is a star, and it says it's speaking about himself. It's a well-known story about the altar. So he was working on Bitochen. And he intentionally did not prepare for himself a candle in the night. It was the middle of the night. He was sitting in the darkness. There was no possible human way of getting a candle. And in a short order of time, somebody came and brought him a candle. He did not recognize him, neither in his coming nor his going. Okay, that's the story. And it's interesting that there are different versions of this story. And according to the version of the Stipler, the Stipler created a poem around this story. And in the Stipler's version, so he was sitting there and the, the candle went out and then he had Bitochen, someone brought in the candle. And there's different versions where he went out in order to get it. But he writes the story himself, about himself, and uh, he makes it clear a few things here. It's very, very interesting. Number one is that he was Isaac Bislam des Habitochen. He was working on Bitochen. And so in working on Bitochen, working on faith in God, so he, he extended himself, meaning he did something which was out of the nor- normal boundaries of what one would normally do when it comes to Bitochen. Usually we ask Hashem for something that we need. We, have tr- we trust Hashem that He's going to give us the parking spot. We trust Hashem is going to provide us with the money we need to pay our mortgage, whatever it is. But usually Bitochen is something that I need. Here we see that the altar worked on Bitochen and pushed himself past his normal level and asked Hashem for something that he didn't need. He didn't have to go into the forest without a candle. He chose to do that because he was working on Bitochen. So it's very interesting. It's also interesting is that when my Rosh Hashiva taught this story, so he mentioned, and it's brought down here as well on the bottom of the, uh, in the fancy Madrega Adam. So he mentioned that that candle, so it burnt down, he saved the stump of the candle, the altar of Navardic. He saved it for many years. 25 years it was held in the family as a symbol of the altar's bitachon. And after 25 years, there was a great fire in Navardic. Many of the houses burned down, including the altar of Novartik's house. And the family was crying that the house burned down, but they weren't crying because of their lost possessions. They were crying because they lost the candle. But the altar said, it's clear that Hashem feels that we don't need the crutch anymore of the candle in order to have bitachon. We can have bitachon no matter what. We can trust Hashem no matter what. But what we see from the story, amazing story, is that it's possible to push oneself past the normal level of bitachon. It's possible to ask Hashem for a miracle, a literal miracle, miracle not only for what one needs, but even for something that a person doesn't need. And it's possible to, to have that as a symbol of a person's bitachon. I made lots of lessons in, in this, in this uh, idea that, that uh, you know, there is an ordinary level of bitachon that it's, that it's possible to stand on, to, to continue with, to, to remain at. There's an awareness that we have to have. What is our level? We have to be honest with ourselves because it might be possible for certain individuals to serve Hashem, to have that relationship with Hashem such that they can literally get miraculous things coming whenever they want. That's a very high level. Is it, is it attainable? Yes, I know people who are on that level. Is it attainable for me and for you? I don't know. It depends on the person. It depends on their level of trust in Hashem. Is it possible? I believe it's possible for everyone. According to Bitochen, it's, according to the Altar of Navarach, it seems that this level is a possible is possible for everyone. But what we also see is that it's a very high level, which may or may not be able to be maintained. And so therefore, a person can push past his normal level 
and then use the the use whatever he's received perhaps as a symbol of his bitachin. What is the idea? For twenty five years they had that candle. The idea is that they recognized that they had pushed past the altar had pushed past his normal level, but he saw that it worked. He saw that it worked. That if he had a certain level of bitachin, it it worked for him, and it was mechazek him. It strengthened him in his bitachin. So a person can look to the past, to, to the times when they've had bitachin. I I could tell you stories about myself, uh, where where I've had certain experiences in bitachin, that the bitachin worked very clearly. Uh, I mentioned it, I don't remember if I mentioned it in this series, but I mentioned it in the previous series, eight years ago, where I had Bitochen, then I would get a ride to a certain location. And it wasn't very likely, there weren't that many people around driving. It was the first day of Chalmoid Pesach, eight years ago. And I got a ride to the exact location that I needed to get to. So, did that happen afterwards? Did I have a Bitochen story like that afterwards? No, I, I can't really tell you one. Have I had other cases of Bitochen where I've trusted Hashem and had Siyat Dishmaya? Certainly. But something as open as that and as clear as that, no. But I can turn back to that story, which is so clear. I had bitachon. I trusted in Hashem, and it worked. Hashem gave me exactly what I what I asked for, exactly what I trusted Him about, right? And I can turn back to the story and say it worked then, and it can work again if I have that level of bitachon, if I have that level of trust. So it's a very powerful story He's telling here. Ve'enyan hu pashut, and He explains that the idea is very simple. Hashem tzilcha. The verse tells us, it's a verse in Tehillim, in Psalm chapter 121. God is your shade. He brings a Maimar Chazal, which Marash Shiva mentions, is mentioned here, and it's mentioned in the Shla, but it's not, it's hard to find the original Makor, the original source for it. But it's Miyuchus, he brings, it's Miyuchus, the Maimar Chazal, it's Miyuchus to, as a statement of our sages, they say like this, God is your shadow. So Pashib Shah, the simple understanding is that that we're under we we are we are under the sail of Hashem, we're under the shade of God, we are under the it's like a, coming under the shade of a tree that protects us from the sun. Hashem protects us. But there's another aspect. Hashem is your shade. What does it mean? Just like when a person wants to when a person moves his hand and there's a shadow from his hand. If you want to show the the, if you're interacting with your shadow, so to speak, you show it a hand, so it shows you back a hand. And if you show just a finger, so the shadow also shows a finger. So, says the altar, when it comes to a person's trust in Hashem, God is our shade. God responds to us the way that we interact with Him. If a person makes a strong decision, Makes a powerful decision in his mind that he's going to he's going to be above all his shtadlis. I'm not going to make any efforts. I'm not going to put in any efforts. I'm going to completely depend on God. So when a person makes that decision, he's going to completely place his trust in God. He's not going to put in any efforts at all. So that decision results that Hashem will now bring about miracles, will now bring him his needs in a miraculous way, in a way that doesn't seem possible based on the laws of nature. Like that person who came in front of Rava, that he had trust in God, that he would get whatever he wanted, which was a fattened chicken and old wine, without any efforts. That it would come. He had he had trust in Hashem that it would come however he wanted. He believed however however it would. Right? Even if it came in an, in a supernatural way. He believed that he would get his needs from God. It's possible for every single individual, says the altar. Anybody can be on this level. It's just a question of decision. A person can stand strong in his knowledge, in his mind. And his trusting in his heart and in his soul. In this trust in Hashem. He can satisfy his soul with absolute peace. Everything that he's missing, he will, it will come to him on its own. So he lays down this amazing foundation that it all depends on us. Hashem is our shade. God responds to us the way that we interact with him. 
if we have a complete trust, so Hashem will give us our needs. And he mentions, I don't remember if it's Beferish and the Madrigus or other words, my Rosh Hashiva who says it, but I believe it's both, that uh, as a mushal, you know, a person comes to somebody in the middle of the night. Let's say you have your, your someone knocks on your door in the middle of the night, and it's not a person that you are afraid that they're going to do anything wrong. Just a, a Jew, maybe somebody that you know. He knocks on the door, he says, I have nowhere to go. It's raining outside, it's cold. I have nowhere to go. Please, can I sleep in your house? So if a person really feels like this person is desperate, so naturally they'll let, let the person in. There's no one else to depend on. You can only depend on me. So I'm going to take care of them. Right? And in the same way, Kavachaymer Hashem, when he sees that we depend on Hashem, when he sees that we depend on him, and we have nowhere else to turn, we have no other options, we're not depending on ourselves. So we don't say, oh, if you don't let me into your house, so then I'm going to go to my aunt who lives around the corner. Go to your aunt around the corner, right? So that's how it is with Bitachim. When we show Hashem that, that we have no other options, we show Hashem that we really are only depending on Him. So certainly Hashem will provide for us what we need. Amazing thing. So it's interesting also, this contrast between what we need and what we want, right? We saw with Rava, we saw the story of this this poor person that he wanted to have fat and chicken, and, and we saw that a person can have bitachim when it comes to his wants, not just his needs. And we saw that also with regards to the candle. And yet he finishes off and says, of anything that he's missing. And I would venture to say that it's true in regards to the things that we want as well. If we truly feel that this thing that we want is, is truly Im- important to us and it's a need for us right when the, when the altar of Navardic walked into his base Musar, he walked into his little shack where he studied in the forest and he decided that he needed that candle he needed that candle right it was something that he was missing so that's part of what goes on with bitachin is that we have to truly feel like we're missing that thing we really need that thing and then hashem provides it if we have that full bitachin hashem is like the shade okay so that's the end of chapter two Let's begin chapter 3. This is what it says in the Midrash. Amazing thing. So, is it something that every single Jew can do? Is it something, is it possible for anyone to attain a level of bitachin where God performs miracles for them? Whether it's uh, bitachin with ishtadlis, whether it's without ishtadlis. But is it possible that a person, any person can attain that level? So he brings a medrash which indicates that yes, it's possible for anybody in any generation to be able to have bitachin. The verse says that the, the angel said to Yaakov in his dream, he said, Yaakov, medrash says, Loi uladeris, to him and to all generations. There's no such thing as a generation that doesn't have somebody like Yaakov. Even though the level of Jacob was so high in regards to his trust in God. To the point that the entire nature was subservient to Jacob. Right? In, in the context of the story, Jacob was involved with Laban. He was working for him for many years and it came time for him to receive his payment. And there was all kinds of interactions with Laban changing his, changing the conditions in terms of payment. So, Laban was trying all of his wiliest tricks in order to cheat Yaakov out of his payment. Even though in a natural way, Laban should have succeeded. But since all of nature was subservient to Jacob and everything needed to change for, on his behalf, for his benefit, even though Laban was trying with all of his wiles to get what he wanted, to, get, to, to cheat Yaakov out of his payment, and nature was on his side, but since Yaakov was a Balbitachin, Jacob was the one who had amazing trust in Hashem. So all the efforts that Laban put in to try to stop him, to try to prevent him from getting what was rightfully his, 
Yaakov, the all of nature was subservient to him and his bitachin. And so miracles occurred for him, Lamailam and Ateva. Supernatural events would take place in order for Yaakov to receive that which was rightfully his. And we'll see more about this in our next Bitachin podcast. Thanks so much for listening. I'd like to remind you once again that there's a group going on on the phone, separate group for men on Sundays, group for women on Wednesdays. And I invite you to join us. You can send an email to me, arigoldwag at gmail.com or to the Bitachon group at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening.